So this is the iCharger 306B, which I purchased to balance, charge, discharge, and analyze my Nissan LEAF modules. Um, this costs about $160. It was the cheapest model that did everything I wanted it to do at the speed I wanted it to do. They have more expensive models that have dual outputs. I only needed the one output. So you have your positive and minus output there. There's a temperature sensor. So in the box, when you buy it, you get this remote temperature sensor. So you can plug that in and monitor temperature in a battery pack. Also comes with the oldest style micro USB port for right there. So you can hook this thing into a computer. And there is some open source software called Data Explorer that lets you chart your battery as it's discharging or charging. Um, it comes with these little um, clip-on power things with the banana jack connector inside. I'm not using those for the power input. I bought a separate cable that I've wired up with ring terminals to connect into a different Nissan LEAF battery bank. Um, power input here is pretty wide range. It's uh, four and a half to 38 volts DC. Normally you plug these into like a car battery um, for charging RC aircraft in the field. I'm actually quite impressed. It goes up to 38 volts. It goes down to four and a half. So you could plug this into a six volt golf cart battery or a you know a 24 or 36 volt battery system if you wanted to. Now the only downside of course is it does not have an AC adapter so if you wanted to run it off of AC you're going to have to buy a power supply in that range that you run off of AC. It also comes with some output ports here that just clip on the batteries um, but I had to make my own cable for the Nissan LEAF modules. All right, so down here I have a group of six Nissan LEAF modules wired up with these three in parallel and these three in parallel and the whole set in series, so it's a total of a 16 volts. Um, and I have these guys wired into the ring terminal, so I can just plug my um, RC charger into that, and that powers it up. Also, because this is a battery, I can put power back into that battery when I'm discharging. All right, so let's say you have two cells, and this first cell is at 4.02 volts, and the second cell is at 3.81 volts. You could balance charge the whole module, but because they're so far off, you're probably going to be sticking around waiting for the low cell to catch up. So what I'm going to be doing is charging half of this at a time. And so I'm not going to be using my 2S balance cable. I'm only going to be using the plus and the minus, but I'm doing it to one cell at a time. And so we will be using just the charger on a one cell at a time. So all it's really doing is looking at the ending voltage and it doesn't have to monitor the voltage of multiple different cells all at once. Now, if you're doing this, you'll notice my charger says, hey, you have a balance error because you have a 2S balance plug plugged in, but I'm not getting any voltage readings on the center port. Um, so we unplug that. We're doing just the positive and minus, and it's going to be a 1S. And we have to either automatically determine the number or program it in ourselves. All right, so when we go into the lithium battery charging, we can't use balance charge because we're not using a balancing lead. We're just doing one cell. Um, so we can do a charge or a fast charge. And you might think, oh, let's do the fast charge because it's faster. And the answer is it ends faster, but it's not really faster. Um, you're going to be putting in, you know, in this case, 10 amps is what I'm going to be using because I'm going through the balance terminal. And so the 10 amp rate is going to be the same if you do the fast charge or the charge. What's different is when it ends. So the uh, charge will basically let the current taper off a little bit more. And so it'll try to get the cell closer to that terminating um, voltage, whereas the fast charge gets it up close to it, but then turns off when the current has dropped a little bit. So time-wise, the fast charge is a little bit faster, but the initial amount of current in is going to be its full amount. And this here will get you closer to your ending voltage. So this says 2S, which is wrong. So we're going to have to change a few things here. So 
I'm going to hit this button once, and I'm going to change this to LiPo because that's going to be closer to the voltage I want. I'm going to change this to 10 amps, and that's just because I'm going through the balance terminal in the center of the battery module. Um, it can probably take 20 amps, but we're just going to do 10 amps just to be safe here. And this charger can actually go up to 30 if you're going through the outside terminals that you know are going to work with that. Um, we change this to 1S, and you can see it's 3.7 volt nominal. If you look at the LiPo here on a per cell um, on a per cell basis, it's going to try to get it to 4.17. And if you don't like that 4.17, you can change that in the settings. All right, I'm going to push start and hold. Checks the battery, make sure the voltage is about right. And off it goes. Now here, if you look at the balance inputs, there's no balance inputs. So the voltage you get is this 4.16. That's the voltage coming out of the charger. At the battery, depending on your cabling, that might be a little lower at the battery. Um, it's already limiting itself to 8.7 amps. The battery is only accepting 8.7 amps at this voltage. And so you can see here that this amperage is going to go down as it charges it up. Um, and basically it's maintaining the voltage, 4.16 volts and the amperage will basically have to keep going down as the battery accepts less and less. All right, so that cell took two hours and nine minutes to get uh, 7.6 amp hours into it. Um, it says that it's holding the voltage, or the ending voltage is 4.15. I measure 4.135, but pretty close. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the second cell. Alright, so now we charge the other one up. I'm going to, since this is remembering this thing here, I'm going to exit out and then start it up again. Alright, so that resets the amp hour counter. You can see here we've actually reached the 10 amp current limit on the charger. So the um, cells on that side of the battery um, are accepting more current, probably means they're lower than the first set of cells, so it might add more amp hours into them. Alright, I have connected it to a module that should be good. I'm going to change this to LiPo, 30 amps. Charging at 30 amps. You can see I have 4.08 and 4.03, so these two cells are more in balance. Its ending voltage is 8.34, I think that's 4.17 per module. So once those get fully charged, we will do a discharge test on that module and see how it goes. Okay, I have balance charged this cell and checking with the voltmeter. You can see I have 4.150 on one cell and 4.158 on the other. That's about as balanced as they're going to get. So let's discharge this good module and see how well it works. All right, here we have discharge at 20 amps, down to 3.3 volts, 2S. We are regenerating our discharge back into the input battery. It's a long press to confirm that, there we go. And off we go.
All right, it's been running for 30 minutes. It's drawn out 10 amp hours since it's discharging at 20 amps an hour. Um, and if we look at the cell voltages, you can see it's 3.96 and 3.97. So that's a good sign the cells are staying discharging at the same rate, essentially. All right, it's been an hour and 30 minutes, and we're at about 30 amp hours taken out of the battery. And you can see that both cells are pretty close, 3.82 and 3.84. So this module looks pretty good. All right, it finished in two and a half hours, 48.9. We'll probably just call it 49 amp hours capacity in this battery. And this guy here is 3.25, that guy's 3.59 right now. So they're not perfectly balanced, but as you get near the bottom end, they're going to start you know, discharging the voltage drops much quicker, even though it's a, a minimal difference in the things. So that's pretty good, given that the brand new capacity is 60 amp hours, and these things are from 2013, so that's at least seven to eight years old, um, and they still have almost 50 amp hours left in them. So after I capacity test them, I just write the amp hours over here. All right, I've been charging 42 minutes at 30 amps, and um, these connectors here are warm to the touch, maybe 100 degrees, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, um, not at all uncomfortable to keep my fingers on. I have emailed the Progressive RC where I bought this, and they said they've tested this thing up to 40 amps for multiple hours, and um, never had any problems with it, so they said it's normal for that to get just a little bit warm. So it looks like it is safe to run it at 30 amps. Um, none of my other connectors on the input battery or my ring terminals or these connectors here which are banana terminals um, are as warm so it's specific it either this cable with these banana terminals or the jacks in the charger um, it might be warmth from inside the charger perhaps the switching transistors or MOSFETs are sharing a um, heat sink with the plugs maybe so it's possible that heat is not coming from resistance in the plugs but it's coming from some switching electronics in the charger however the rest of the charger with the fan blowing is very cool you know the case and the case is just barely warm these are definitely warmer than the case so my suspicion is there's a little bit of resistance in that connection All right, so the large battery that I was using to charge and discharge um, after six of these modules has actually gotten down to about 15.1 volts, so it was limiting the amount of current I could put back in for charging. Um, and so I'm just hooking that up to a standard power supply um, to charge that guy back up to about 16 volts. And that's just completely manually. I'm going to have to make sure all these cells, cells stay balanced manually, um, but at a 3 amp charge rate I have plenty of time to come out and check it every so often. Alright, so I want to charge half of a Nissan LEAF module and the 1S, 3.7 volt as the correct setting here. Um, I'm just going to check this thing, see what happens if I lie to it. Say, hey, I'm going to do a 2S, so obviously that voltage is twice what it should be. Let's see what it says when it tries to go in there and does the battery check. Ooh, do checking, confirm, enter, cancel, stop. So it noticed that the voltage was too uh, high there. So one nice feature I like about the informational displays here, you know, I'm charging this one cell at 8 amps at 4 volts. Um, if you go left a little ways, it'll say, hey, here's your input power from your battery that this is plugged into. Um, you're drawing 2.4 amps because the, the input power is at 15.73 volts. So you can monitor your voltage that's coming in from your input battery and see how your input battery is doing.